Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I often get asked about the motor upgrade that I've done to this lathe. I think it's pretty obvious that the large motor in the background of shot isn't a standard feature. So I'm going to run you through the hows and whys behind the upgrade and why it really suits me and the material that I cut, though it should be noted this setup suits me and may not be optimal for you. Before I talk about the upgraded motor, I'll quickly run you through the motor that the lathe came with. This is a 350 watt brushed DC motor. Brushed meaning there are physical carbon brushes in the motor, and today most mini lathes tend to come with brushless motors, which I recommend, but either way, they're going to be running on DC power. And for most hobby machinists, DC motors are the most optimal choice, and depending on the size of the motor, upgrading it might not be necessary. I've seen these lathes come with 1 horsepower motors, which is easily enough for most applications. But if you really need to increase the power of your lathe, a brushless DC motor is a great option. For one, they have really good size to weight and power ratios. This is a 400 watt DC brushless motor, and it is so much smaller and lighter compared to an equally powerful 390 watt induction motor. And another advantage is that you can easily have DC motors with real-time speed controllers, which is very useful in allowing you to select the most optimal RPM for your cut and material. And this is really useful for cutting threads, because you can dial the RPM down to 80 to cut your threads, with the only big downside being that to cut the threads at these low RPMs, you need to supply the motor with a lot of current, and generally speaking, the cheaper motor boards really struggle to deliver the current necessary, hence why on these little legs, they can easily stall when you cut threads. Furthermore, these import motorboards that come as standard aren't exactly what I'd call high quality, and when they do break, they're pretty expensive to replace. And that's where this motor comes in. When the motorboard blew, instead of replacing the motor with a brushless DC motor, I opted for using an AC induction motor that was originally mounted to my drill press, though I don't use the drill press too much, so it was a no-brainer to use that motor on the lathe. At only 390 watts, it's not much more powerful than the motor it's replacing, though as we'll see, power is not exactly everything. In order to power the lathe, the motor is mounted to a frame on the workbench, and it powers the spindle using a V-belt. There's a pulley on one end of the motor spindle, and one that is mounted to the end of the lathe spindle. This method of powering lathes is pretty commonplace, although I'm not so sure how the stock bearings are liking this amount of tension, though after a year I haven't seen any issues. Now being an AC motor, the setup and wiring is very simple. The motor runs directly from the AC power that we get from the wall, with the only component in the middle being a simple on and off button. No need for any controller boards or rectifiers that can go wrong. One thing that a lot of people will see as a downside is there's no speed control or reversing of this motor. You can press the on button and the motor spins and it will spin at a constant 1800 RPM until you press the off button. If this was a three phase motor, I could use a variable frequency drive to change the RPM, but unfortunately, whilst this property does have three phase power, this workshop only has access to single phase AC and single phase AC motors don't work too well with VFDs. So to vary the RPM, I use my limited range of pulleys to drop or increase the RPM, similar to the way that you would do it on a dual press. This does limit the options that you have access to in terms of RPM, and changing the pulley ratios to change the RPM takes a fair amount of time, which is typically why you see me using an incorrect RPM for the material that I'm cutting, because I just can't be bothered to change the RPM all that often. However, on this lathe, thankfully, the materials are really forgiving to using an incorrect surface feed. However, there is one huge advantage to using AC over DC, and that's at the RPM that this motor runs at, it produces a huge amount of torque for the low horsepower that the motor is rated for. And as we gear the RPM down, we effectively increase the torque due to the pulley ratios. 
If I drop the spindle speed to 1000 RPM, which is the lowest I can currently achieve, the torque is multiplied by 1.8 and it's able to take really deep cuts in a lot of metals. The advantage that suits me the most though is that the material that I machine the most is acrylic, so I need to machine at high RPMs. DC motors unfortunately lack high end torque and when I used to machine acrylic at maybe 2500 RPM, the motor would have no torque and as a result the RPM would drop by maybe 2 or 300 RPM. With the AC motor, the torque is really high and it's constant and that's why I opted for using an AC motor. I can take really deep cuts and the RPM will stay steady. To get the same torque at this RPM using a DC motor, I'd probably need to buy a really powerful DC motor, but that really didn't suit me. Speaking of which, this is why this setup suits me, because I need to machine acrylic at a high RPM whilst having a fair amount of torque at my disposal. For you, this setup might not be optimal. If you want to have the ability to cut threads with the lead screw and change the RPM in real time, a DC motor is certainly the way to go. And speaking of which, a lot of people recommend using a treadmill motor to upgrade the power of your lathe, and that's something that I agree with. Treadmills tend to have pretty powerful motors, maybe one to two horsepower, and they usually have pretty good quality speed controls, and if you're lucky, you might be able to get a motor for next to nothing or for free. You might need to source your own pulley and V-belt though, though I'm pretty sure that's pretty simple to whip up on the lathe. Two more advantages to AC motors that I wasn't able to squeeze in before is that AC motors don't really degrade at high temperatures. From memory, when I used to use the old DC motor, when I would use it for a couple hours at a time, it would heat up and it would thermally degrade and I'd have to leave it for a while to cool down. But this doesn't really occur with induction motors. They suffer little to no degradation at high RPM, which means I can use them for a lot longer. And finally, these motors are arguably one of the most reliable and simple motors that you can find. They work using induction, and as a result, they require no carbon brushes to be replaced, they need no complicated speed control boards, it's simply an on and off switch, and as a result, they need next to no maintenance. Even dust doesn't really phase them. I've seen workshops where the drill press is caked in dust and it doesn't phase it one bit. And that's why in this workshop, which can get really dusty, especially if I'm machining acrylic, AC motors make the most sense for me. Your requirements might be different and as a result, a brushless DC motor might make sense for you. But for me, I'm really happy with the results from the AC motor and for the foreseeable future, I'm going to stick with it. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.